everyone, I'm Dr. Y. Coney and welcome to Bright Star Baby and Child Clinic. In this video, I would like to talk about picky eating or fussy eating. What is fussy eating or picky eating? Actually, universally, there's no accepted definition of fussy eating or picky eating. However, a parent with a fussy eater will definitely know what I'm talking about. What are some of the signs and symptoms of a fussy eater? I'll go through some of the, the symptoms first and then we will talk about why this happens and finally we will talk about how to manage picky eating. Below are some of the signs and symptoms of a fussy eater and we'll go through it one by one. Number one, a fussy eater will tend to show very strong likes or dislikes on a particular food. Now, they will often refuse foods such as vegetables, fruits, and meats. Number two, they will refuse food they are familiar as well as foods that are new to them. Number three, they may show disdain or they balk at certain shape, color, smell, or texture of a certain food. Number four, they may very carefully look at that food, a new food especially, look at it and examine it like it's a specimen or they pick at it. Number five, picky eaters may sometimes prefer drinks over food. Number six, they have a very limited range of food that they will accept. Number seven, they have very strong expectations on food presentation and how the, the food may appear. For example, some children will not accept fruits that, um, that touch each other or have certain color on them or if it's served in the wrong plate, they may also reject that fruit. Number eight, they don't show any enjoyment of the food that's presented to them. Number nine, they may eat very slowly or they look very not interested. Number 10, uh, children that are picky eaters may have meltdowns, tantrums, or they show some sort of uh, discomfort or anxiety during meal times. Next, I will talk about why picky eating happens. Well, it's actually very normal that a child's uh, growth rate as well as their appetite is slow down after one year old. Food preferences also start to develop at this age. Self-feeding usually start at around about one year old. So it gives the child a sense of control over their foods. That's why picky eating actually starts occurring at about this age, usually at one year old. So it starts at about toddlerhood and it peaks during the preschool years. So the child may like one or two types of food in the beginning and they like it for many many weeks many many days and then all of a sudden they don't seem to like that food at all for no particular reason or something that they may not like at all suddenly became their favorite so there's a lot of changes in their preferences and also picky eaters are not consistent eaters they may eat a lot some days and then other days they hardly eat at all. I'm sure this sounds familiar to some of the parents out there with the picky eater. It is very common, it's a common phenomenon and it is all part of a growing up process. Parents, I do try to tell you guys not to get too frustrated over it. Just go with the flow, it is a normal process. We go on to how do we manage these picky eaters. First, parents must try to manage your own expectations on your child's eating. How much a child should be eating is, uh, first you have to grasp the concept that it is not as much as you eat. It is uh, usually the size of their palm, palm size or their fist size, depending on what it is. For example, they should have a, a palm size of vegetables, palm size of fruits, 
they may have like say the alpha size of protein and also a palm size of carbohydrates so it can be rice noodles so it's quite small they are very small they are not very big size of course there's variability uh, some children eat more some eat less but typically we would say use their own um, palm size and fist size as a gauge some bodies require more nutrients to function some children require less that's all your role as a parent is to provide a nice environment a calm environment uh, without distractions for your child to eat and also a parent's job is to provide various healthy foods for your child from different food groups the child's role is to choose what to eat and how much to eat that is your child's role okay what to eat and how much to eat so that they can learn what is hunger and fullness okay so they feed themselves okay how much to eat and what to eat is their choice you can't still be feeding your child that is not conducive to helping them overcome picky eating okay. here i will share with you some tips on managing picky eating firstly it is to share meal times as a family try to have a meal as a family together um, as it creates a, a sort of bonding time when you share meals with your child you also become a role model of healthy eating to your child you should try to eat healthily yourself and show your kids that um, healthy foods can be delicious too so it all starts from you now uh, you also can make meal times to be very uh, enjoyable without distractions from tv or stream time and it's also a good time to bond as a family you can take this time to also talk to your child you can ask how their day was ideally it is best to make one meal for the whole family even if your child may not like some of the things that are being served because if you sometimes make separate meals for them this encourages more picky eating try to make at least some foods that they like in that one meal um, so that everyone can enjoy the meal together number two avoid forcing if your child refuses the food that is being served try not to make a big fuss over it uh, try not to get angry or show too much emotion if they reject the food that is being served you can try perhaps think uh, from their perspective maybe they are not hungry and also how would you feel if you are not hungry and someone is still forcing food down your throat you may not like that feeling isn't it so pressuring your child to eat in fact will make them dislike that food even more so it makes meal times very stressful and uh, more anxiety occurs so it makes the picky eating worse try to avoid this vicious cycle of forcing food number three avoid bribing your child so sometimes parents will come to me and they say to make my child eat the healthy food, I will sometimes promise them or bribe them with the snack food like ice cream, chocolates or dessert food that may make them want to eat it more. However, when you do this, when you bribe them, it will make them feel like eating the healthy, usual, normal, regular foods as a sort of like a chore, like it's a, it's a must-do and it feels simply very troublesome for them so it will make meal times more unbearable because they feel like oh, i have to go through the meal times to get my dessert instead what you can do is try not to restrict or make the snack food or dessert food like a prize okay don't make it like that you can in fact just give it to them you say oh you want uh, the dessert okay go ahead but in small amounts you can say so that they don't think of it like it's a treat it's like part of the meal only you leave it to them you leave the dessert there you leave the their regular foods the healthy foods there as well and they are the one deciding what to eat and how much to eat 
So if they think of the dessert as less of a treat and just as a regular part of the meal, they won't prize it as much and don't think of the regular meal as just a chore. Well, everything is normal, everything is equal. Well, you take away that power of the dessert foods, okay? You take it away and simply make it like it's normal. Sometimes what uh, you can do is also totally eliminate dessert kind of snack foods in the household. If there's none of these things at home, of course, then they won't go looking for it and asking for it. You can substitute dessert foods with healthy fruits. When there's no junk food, there's nothing to bribe with. And also try to put um, healthy foods like vegetables and fruits uh, within easy reach of your child so that anytime they can grab something healthy as a snack. Number four, keep on offering new foods. Try not to give up so fast. Keep offering them new things. We do say that uh, it takes sometimes up to 10 tries before a child can accept a new food. Their taste buds can accept a new food. So 10 tries. So don't give up after one or two tries, all right? Also, when you are trying a new food, make sure your child is hungry at that time, hungry during meal times, not to you know, overstuff them during the snack times. So again, make sure that they are rightly hungry during meal times. Then they are more likely to accept the new food. Number five, give a variety of foods. It's important that you offer a variety of healthy foods with various colors, textures, various smells, new flavors to them, as well as new ways of cooking. Try all sorts of things. You can try different herbs and spices. Nothing too, too strong at first, but you can slowly build up the, the spice level. You can also try to offer these new foods and variety of foods in small amounts. Rather than overwhelm them with a big amount, try a little bit first. Only add on a second helping if they request for more. Number six, try to make your food more fun. You can try because they're children, they like a very nice cute presentation. You can make the food a little bit cuter, or more fun in the ways it's presented. You can try to prepare fruits in interesting, creative ways. You can arrange it in a more colorful, playful manner. If you can, try also using different utensils, their platings and all these kind of things. Make it interesting for them. Children actually much prefer using their fingers to eat foods. So make more finger foods for them. Utilize the fact that they love to use their fingers. So finger foods as much as possible. You can make your own homemade healthy nuggets and healthy fish fingers and stuff like that. Of course, these are all done within your time constraints. Number seven, try to prep your meals together, meaning to do meal cooking or meal preparation together with your child. Let them choose the fruit or vegetable that you're planning to use. Get them involved in the preparation. Or you can also get them to go to the grocery store with you and let them choose the foods as well as the, the products that you want to use. It gives them a sense of achievement when they can participate in the meal choosing and meal prepping. So you can also get them to help with simple things like stirring and mixing, uh, counting. You can also get them to drop things into plates. Lots of supervision involved, of course. Also bear in mind things that are sharp and dangerous may not be such a good idea for the children to use. But simple things like stirring is okay. Usually, the children will give their own creation a little try. Even though it's just a bite, they may or may not like it, but at least it's a try. Um, I have done this with my children before and they love meal prepping with me. They tend to eat more of what we prepare together. Number eight, you can try to pair up their food by doing a, a food that they love a lot 
with something that they may not like as much, you can pair these two together to bring up the value of the not so fond food, okay? Now you may also try to pair up something that they're familiar with with something unfamiliar that they've never tried before. Like uh, pairing broccoli, something that they may not like, with something that they like, like cheese, salty foods. So you may also try something like tomatoes, which are sour, they may not be so accepting of that, with sweet potato fries, for example. So that's called food pairing. Number nine, I would say try to limit high calorie or sugary drinks during you know non-meal times. Try not to overstuff your child with snacks or sugary drinks because these uh, these foods tend to fill them up with just empty calories. Okay, they're high in calorie but not much nutrients. Okay, so they might get too full. And by the time meal times come, they, they're not hungry at all. So it's not conducive for that. Number 10 is to try to space out the meal times appropriately. Usually, I would say children should have three meals a day and one to two snacks a day. To space out the meal times to about three to four hours between meals and keep the snack time about two hours before meal times. Now, it's common sense that if your child just had a snack before meal times, um, of course he or she won't be hungry for during the regular meal times. Try to keep meal times short to about 30 minutes uh, to avoid boredom. If you drag on longer, let's say an hour, an hour and a half of meal times, they'll get bored, they'll get anxious you know, and see and they want to get out of the high chair or get out of their seat and go and do something else mm -hmm. try to keep it short and sweet 30 minutes for meal times another important thing about uh, timing is that children love a routine so if you can keep your meal times to a routine then the child actually may be more receptive of meal times because they know that's meal time and you know, try to eat during that time. They thrive on routines. Now, what are some of the risks of uh, children who are picky eaters, who are severe picky eaters? Of course, the number one risk is that they don't get enough nutrients in their body and it, this may slow down their physical development. So they may be more tired, they may be more pale, they may not grow as well, their weight may not be what they should be, their height may not be what they should be as well and sometimes children with certain vitamins or nutrient deficiencies may complain of things like leg pain, headaches, tummy aches. They may also have issues with delayed tooth eruption. The other thing is they may also have delayed brain development or delayed mental development. The child may have difficulty concentrating on they may do quite poorly in school as well and their performance may be not optimal. But sometimes uh, parents also ask me, oh, my child is a picky eater, do I need to give my child any supplements, any vitamins or any supplemental formula? So my answer to this is if your child has quite severe or even if your child has any nutrient deficiencies because of their picky eating uh, leading to things like weight being stagnant or poor weight gain or their growth they are short you know, uh, their growth is um, delayed as well you can try the methods that I listed just now all the 10 ways the 10 tips of uh, managing picky eating and try those ways at the same time you can also give them vitamin supplementation or any fortified formulas to treat certain nutrient deficiencies like um, vitamin D deficiency A vitamin C because these nutrients are quite hard to reach the daily goals huh, based on uh, their eating patterns okay so sometimes they may need supplements and supplemental formula just a note for these uh, for these supplemental formulas is 
not to overfeed them or over rely on these supplemental formulas because it may make them full and hence it may make them not want to eat as much bear in mind these are just supplements they are not to be taken too many times a day so that's the end of our video i hope you enjoyed the video and maybe get some information and tips on how to manage picky eating and i hope you have a good day take care bye